Hi, it's Matt here from Pilot Practice Exams, where you can pass in half the time. This is video three on the Echo Learning System. Now, this time we're going to have a little bit of a look into the mats. So in video one and two, we spoke about how the aircraft was loaded in the moment, center of gravity, the importance of zero fuel weight and max takeoff weight. And that's, that's so key, those two. So let's have a, just a little bit of a look at the start of the mats for Echo Loading System here. Here's what you're going to notice first of all is that uh, we can draw it up and because we spoke about the way moments work and a moment is just basically the weight or the mass times the length of the arm. So if we represent along this scale the amount of millimetres from the datum and we represent up this scale here the amount of kilograms, what we can do is just plot it on a graph and we end up with these triangles. Okay, so the, the aft limit remains constant. Our echo loading system tells us that. So if we flick over here, the aft limit, no matter which weight you're at, stays at 2680. But see how the forward limit changes depending on the weight. And we have two weight categories there for the forward limit. So at 2360, they told us the forward limit was 2400 millimeters. And at 2950, they told us that the uh, that the forward limit was 2560. So what we do is we then draw a line along there, and that would allow us to plot or calculate out using this maths over here the forward limit for any weight in between those two, so that we could get the forward limit at any particular weight. Now what we've done is we've done the maths down here. So the forward limit is going to equal this 2400 plus the weight minus 2360 times 0.27. Now we work that out by using this type of simple maths. They really should be in brackets, but x over y, come up with that number so that we can work out what the relationship was. So then what we've done is we've put the 2560 minus 2400 there over y, this is the y-axis, 2950 minus 2360. Okay, and then that's going to equal, equals, that's going to be 160 and 2950 equals 590. And then when we times that out, that's going to equal 0 0.27. And you can see that that's roughly a quarter of that number, which tells you that that's correct. So now whenever we plug a one of these numbers, a, a weight number into here, we can work out where the forward limit lies. So as an example, if we chose 2800, well, it's going to be 2400 plus how far along this curve? Well, 2800, which is the weight, minus 2360, which is that, is going to tell you how far up there it is. Right? And then that you're going to be able to come down and read off. So 2800 minus 2360 is around, what's that, 440? So then 440 times 0.27 is going to be around about 100-ish. So 2400 plus around about 100 is just 2500. And when you work it out exactly, it's going to come out to 2519. And you can keep doing that. And as you can see here, when we've done is the maximum, that line there, so we've cross-checked it, 2400 plus weight, which is 2950, the max one, minus 2360 times 0 0.27 equals 2560. So we cross-checked it. That was correct. We then cross-checked it again at 2360, which is the uh, max zero fuel weight, and we got 2400 just there. So that tells us how our forward limit uh, calculations work, how the um, formula works, and then cross-checking it over here proves that it works and proves we cross-checked it to make sure that it was accurate. So when we look at our aircraft from side on, what that's telling you is that no matter what the weight is, the center of gravity must lie in front of that aft limit, that when the aircraft is really light at that 2360, the zero fuel weight, it must be behind that limit of the forward limit. And the forward limit for when we're at 2950 is there. Now, if we look at a wing from side on, and this is the type of diagram you'd use 
for your percentage, work out your percentage MAC, which is your percentage of mean aerodynamic court. And what we're really saying there by percentage MAC is, in other words, this is the mean aerodynamic cord, the cord, the wing cord, right? So what percentage, where does the center of gravity lay as a percentage of the length of that cord? So that cord is 1900. If the center of gravity was say uh, at 25%, then it would be 25% of that number, right? But here we are, if you look, I've tried to keep these colors consistent. You can see the red is our forward limit, blue is our half limit, green is our leading edge, and there's our center of gravity range. So when we draw that on a wing, that's what it looks like. The center of gravity can't go behind that point. There's the leading edge. It can't go in front of that point, which means that's our range that our center of gravity must lay within between the zero fuel weight and our max takeoff weight. And here is our forward limit. So in other words, when we're very light at our zero fuel weight, our forward limit can't be in front of that. And when we're fully ready to take off, it can't be uh, in front of that. Okay, and as we get lighter, it can move forward. When we look at it on top, here's the measurements. 2680 is the aft limit. The forward limit must lay between 2400 and 2560, depending on the weight. Now, very importantly is this little triangle here, because we all know from our high school maths that Pythagoras theorem, if we know the sides or angles or hypotenuse of a triangle, as long as we know a few of them, we can work out the rest using sine, cos, and tan. Okay, remember some old hags can't always remember their old age. So sine is going to be the main one to use, but um, millimeters times kilograms. You, you draw that in a triangle and you will be able to use the formula as we did up here. Okay, with this, you'll be able to use that to work out where your forward limit lies.